that is that hurting you? No. The heart is not designed for beating faster and irregular. And at some point, it'll give way. I've got to do something when I don't have a stroke or a heart attack. Yeah. Heavens. I have a very great worry that I don't want to go blind because I've seen my mum go blind. Mm -hmm. So where do you feel the lump? Oh, the hair. Mm -hmm. And when you press it, I can feel it. And that's why I was panicking. If you just hold her hand, that's fine. Even though I know it's a bit of a struggle. Thank you. Bye. Hello. Hi, come on then. So, how are you doing? Oh, it's a disaster. What's the problem? <laughs> oh, it's just everything. Everything's going wrong. The dog seems to be dying. Can't oh, do anything I'm about sorry. it. Well, he's, he's 17, so. Oh, okay, but it's so sad. But he's in incontinent. He keeps having accidents in the house. And I don't, I don't know, I sort of think, well, he, he walks about and loves his dinner. But am I being fair, you know? But I, I'm putting up with it at the moment. You can talk to the vet, yeah? Yeah. And then my neighbour's just doing my head in. Parties nearly every night, they're out in the garden. There's just no peace and quiet at all. You're going to do something about that if it's causing you stress, yeah? Oh, it's just, it's just doing my head, honestly. Any thoughts of moving? Well, I've spent so much. I, I, I've spent thousands in the garden. You need to take control of that one, don't you, David? You can start to get some help. Yeah, so my blood pressure has sort of gone out the window. Have you been checking your blood pressure at home? Uh, last time I checked, it was 192, so I'd, I'd put it away. <laughs> Let me do it today. Is it an urgent appointment? No. OK. Come in, take a seat. How can I help today? I'm sorry, I didn't check in. Yeah, the worry is in the here. Well, there was something that's been bothering me for some time. It um, started a while ago. I, ha I started getting, like, hairs here. Mm -hmm. And now it's, it's like, they're getting longer on my chin mm -hmm. as well. And mm -hmm. they told me that there could be something wrong with my hormones or mm -hmm. something. So mm -hmm. I just thought... How long have you noticed the problem for? Um, this started... Like a year, maybe more than a year ago, but now that that the ones on my chin are getting longer and okay. like here, no, but how long? Getting... I mean, time wise, are we talking a month, a year? Or... Oh, more than a year. Okay. Any problems with your periods? No. Regular. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So um, there is one condition that's associated with facial hairs, although you don't have any other symptoms of it. It's called polycystic ovarian syndrome, mm -hmm. and it's basically when you have high levels of male hormone in the blood. Um, we can check for that as a, as a simple blood test. Okay. okay. They've also told me that um, this could happen if you have um, cysts. Yes, that's exactly polycystic ovarian ah, syndrome. Okay. It's the same thing I'm talking about. Oh, yes, okay, that's okay. right. So it means cysts in your ovaries, right. and they often produce this uh, high concentration of the male hormone testosterone. Also, the blood test will show if... Oh, exactly, okay, yes, yes. Right, Are you happy to have that test done? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Have you ever had talking treatment, talking therapy? No, I haven't. How would you feel about talking to someone about your stress levels? Um... I wouldn't mind, I suppose. It'd start with a telephone call to you, and sometimes they do it all on the telephone. Would you be all right with that? Yeah. You're taking your pills, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. I have to ask. I'm sure that everything you've been telling me about isn't helping with this, no. but with your history, we can't leave it this high. In your case, we need to take no chances, yeah? Have you had your blood done? Have you checked your calcium levels and your vitamin D? Yeah, I think so. A little while ago. I'll put some bloods on the system, okay? okay? And I'm going to give you a 10 milligram bisoprolol. And we're going to get you back next week to check your blood pressure, okay? Okay. And I'm going to do a referral 
to get you some talking therapies. Okay? Okay. Good. Thank you, Dr. No problem. You take care. Sorry to move. <laughs> Don't be silly and make those calls, yeah? That's it. Yeah, I'm going to do. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a seat. A few days ago, my boyfriend, she, he just noticed I have a lump in my breasts. As you can, you can't really feel it, but it's quite hard and it's small. Okay. So I rather to come and check. It's only because my father he died on cancer six years, six years ago, and I'm quite anxious with that. So. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So you've never noticed anything before. Do you normally check your breasts? Yes. Okay. And you've got no pain or discomfort? Sometimes I can feel but before yeah. period and, you know. Sure. But... And your periods are regular? Kind of. Okay. Not very regular, but... Sure. And you, you're otherwise fit and well? Yeah. Yeah? Any change in weight recently? Mm, no. Any family history of breast problems? Uh, not as I know. And you said your father died of cancer. What cancer yes. was that? Uh, throat cancer and after it was spread. And my mother, she had the cancer of the woman's stuff. Okay. And after she had the, like, cancer over here, but... And how, how old was she when she had that? Uh, 45. Okay. Chances are it's likely to be benign, non-serious, but even if it is, it means that, that it can be sorted quickly because you've identified it quickly. So you've done absolutely the right thing, okay, but try not to worry, okay? Yeah. OK, so you're basically looking for any differences between both your breasts and see if anything, your skin tethers in or anything like that. And then you lie down. So mm -hmm. just put your hand behind your head. So pretend you split the breast into four parts and then you just basically work your way around to each part, just having a feel. And then just for any lumps. That feels good. OK, just for that. So where do you feel the lump? Oh, they're here. Mm -hmm. Not so? And when you press it, I can feel it. Mm. It's not a pain as, you know, very yeah. much, but it's like... That's why I was panicking, because I always make sure everything is yeah. good. And obviously, when my boyfriend, he checked a few days ago, I was like... I was really surprised with something. It's, it's very little, though, the mm -hmm. knees where you probably... But if you press it much, yeah. it's really painful. Is so, it? Yeah. OK. OK, definitely something there. That's fine. Get yourself dressed. You. Give me a shot when you're ready. OK, okay so there's, there's definitely something there. It's very small, though, OK? I do think we should get it checked out, OK? So I'll refer you to the breast clinic. Um, they will see you within two weeks. I don't want you to worry, OK? Oh, I'm worried already, but... Oh, yeah. <laughs> OK. Common symptoms of breast cancer are a lump in the breast, perhaps noticing a change in the size of the breast, or finding a lump in the armpit. Pain is not normally a symptom of breast cancer. However, if women are concerned about pain in the breast, then they should definitely talk to their GP. So they will contact you definitely within the next 24 to 48 hours for an appointment. Mm -hmm. And you're available for an appointment within the next two weeks. Perfect. Yeah. Because if not, I will, you know. No, if you don't hear anything by the end of next week, you definitely need to contact our patient services team here. It's really important that you do that. Yeah. OK. I will do. In the meantime, try not to worry. OK. I will do. Most likely things are all OK, but we should get it checked out. Oh, yeah, okay. of course, definitely. All right, take care. Lovely. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Elisa. You too. Now, you've been sent to me because of my right arm. your arm. Okay, yeah. tell me what's been happening. It's been really painful, and mm -hmm. um, I found my fingers were swelling up. I had mm -hmm. to take my rings off, and I'm getting pins and needles all across there. Mm -hmm. It's really painful around the elbow. So, it's if gone. you had to point to an area which was the most painful, where would you point? Here. Okay, just down to that muscle yeah. there. Now, if I feel up here, oh. is that the pain? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So this bit here... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you doing that? <laughs> well, if, if I hear the right spot, I always like to show yeah, it. <laughs> no, <that's> a, yeah. <laughs> OK, so that area, 
Uh, if you think about your arm here, and you've got lots of muscles that run down the, the, this part of the arm into your hand, all of those muscles then uh, go into one tendon, okay, and they insert into that bone there, okay, right. which is really, really sore at the moment. Uh -huh. um, if you played tennis, we'd call it tennis elbow. No. There are all sorts of things we can do about it, okay? And I'm going to give you some exercises to take home as well to try and do some exercises with it. Um, I can tell you about a thing called a tennis elbow band, which you can pick up from one of the pharmacies, okay? okay. The thing I can offer you today is an injection, okay? And that's up to you whether you want to take that or whether you want to try the other things first and see how it goes, okay? Um, the injection is, is not curative. It doesn't stop the problem. It right. reduces the inflammation in that area, okay? And I think doing things like the stretching exercises and the strengthening exercises that I will give you is probably the mainstay of, of treatment. All and right. sometimes we will then send you on to physio to promote that even more, okay? Right. okay. <laughs> Would you like me to go ahead with that? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, right, I'll get it ready. Okay. Hi, this is Monish, she's a medical student. Have a seat. Right. And this is Sophia. Yeah. Yeah, and we were just sort of talking, because we had a little look through. She was here a couple of days ago. Yeah. Right, it's so tell me what's been days happening. Now, since yeah. she's been having fever. Yeah, cough. yeah. Um, last time when I came in, and uh, the doctor says, if anything gets worse, just uh -huh. bring her in. So this morning I found that she, her breathing was hard, like she's struggling in breathing. Yeah. The fever is still the same degrees, yeah. What sort of level? Um, like the, this was 38 uh, sometimes and 38.5. Okay. And the we know she's got this problem with her heart still. Yeah. Uh, is she drinking okay? She's drinking, oh yeah, okay. Sophia's got a heart murmur caused by some backflow of her blood from one chamber in the heart to another, and it makes the heart have to work harder than it would do normally. Apart from her problem with her heart, she's got no other problems no. that I can think of, and no allergies. No. Okay. Should we have a little look at her? Yes. Okay, that's good. Okay. Hello. Oh, sweetie. I'm sorry. I'm just going to put this in your ear, okay? I'm really sorry, sweetie, but you just I just want to check. Oh, oh, sorry, it's just... I tell you what, I tell, listen, 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 okay. Listen, 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 listen. that's all right. Okay, I think, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and listen in now, you know, because I don't think she's going to stop. Oh, sweetheart, I'm sorry, sweetie. I'm not going to bother with her temperature because it's going to be very high, but I do want to have a quick look at her ears, if I may. I'm sorry, sweetie. Just, if you just hold her head, that's just the head on it, that's fine. You can hold it, I know it's a bit of a struggle. Excellent. Sorry, that's all done. All done. Look, look. What's this? It's all done. It's all done. It's important that when children come to see the doctors, they go away feeling happy and content because they'll come back again the next time, not traumatised by the experience. If parents can talk to them about it, explain, then that helps demystify and helps reduce the pressure children feel under when they come to see us. I'm really sorry. Right. She is a poorly little girl. Um, her breathing at the moment, the rate of it, I'm, I'm quite happy with, and the ribs themselves aren't going in. But you're right to bring her back for us to look at her. It does sound as if there's some noises down on this area of, around the chest, which is different to the other side. It's a little bit sort of noisy, a bit rattly. Um, it suggests to me that there is a chest infection starting there, which is why her temperature's still going up and down and why she's sort of struggling a little bit more. I feel she would benefit from some antibiotics. The proviso is, if she starts getting any of her ribs going in or her breathing gets worse mm -hmm. or her nose starts going in and out, mm -hmm. then you need to come either back straight away here or take her straight away to hospital. Okay. okay. Does that sound okay? That's fine. Okay. 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 Thank you so much. You're very welcome. As I said, even if you have to bring, bring her back this afternoon, yeah. don't feel that you know you can't. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank okay. You so much. Not Thank at you. all. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. So the object is to find that spot and I pop a little injection into it, okay? Okay. Tell me when I find that spot. There. Prick now. It's 
It is a painful injection. <laughs> it is. I don't think so. You know, you think of injections as an injection. <laughs> no. There we go. Just put a bit of pressure on that for a moment. Okay. Okay. Just for a couple of minutes there. Okay, so this tells you all about it, okay? It gives you some simple exercises, tells you a little bit about the uh, sort of um, elbow grips that you can, that you can okay. use as well, medication. So when that settles down, okay, I want you to start on the exercises, right, okay? okay. Um, if you want to, then go and purchase one of those you know, tennis elbow bands as well. All right. And let's give it the next two or three months and see how you get on. Okay, then, lovely. Be prepared for the next few days, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye. How can I help? Uh, she's, she's got temperature for the past two days. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. She's got some problem with her tongue. Tummy? She, yeah, she's complaining of ache and uh, okay. she's farting and it's aching with farting. And okay. So, so how long has she been unwell for? Two days. She's got temperature now, you know. Yeah, we've given her calcul at 4.30 this morning. Her glands are all up as well. Uh -huh. Um, so she's had a bit of diarrhoea, any cough, cold, sore throat, or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, she's got mummy nose of it. Go, ah. Uh, my neck will go. Uh, make the noise. Uh, ah. Okay. Is it sore at all? Uh huh. Yeah, it hurts. Uh, it's okay. Do you want to jump up on there and we'll um, have a feel of your tummy? Your tummy pain, when did it start? When did you start, Nita? Tummy pain? Um, it started yesterday. Where did it start? Can you point? There. There. Is it still the same place or has it moved anywhere else? It's not hurting anymore. It's not hurting anymore. Okay. But it's just... Like just... When did she last have diarrhea? Um, yesterday evening. This evening. My heart's very yeah. pressing. Okay. It's, um... That hurts. What about this side? No. It's probably a viral gastroenteritis, OK? Um, I'm just checking it's not her appendix. OK, do you want to just come and sit here? Yeah, um, I think we need to take one thing at a time today, OK? Um, I don't think this is anything more than a, a viral um, illness. And the problem is, is that that viral illness will present in many, many different ways. From now on, though, cowpole, neurofen, regular fluids, rest, and diarrhoea. She's getting lots of di uh, diarrhea. Diarrhea. Get okay. some diarrhea. Okay. I think she'll get better by herself. Okay. See you later. Bye bye. bye. I live five doors away from my first husband. We went out for a month, engaged by the second month, married on the third month, and we lasted 17 years. Wow. wow. You've got to grab it while you can. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Don't get it, get here. You are mine. Mrs. Khan, please. Very noisy out there, isn't it? How have you been? I've been fine, more to the point. How have you been? Come on and have a seat. Have you been travelling again? No. No? You've been at home? It's I've not been like at you. I've home because uh, not feeling too good. OK. Now, this is the result of my eye test. Diabetic screening. They found something, but it's not Very serious. mild. Yeah. yeah. But they want us to keep your diabetes under control, I'm imagining, yeah? Yeah, Dr Bodja, I'm trying my very best. Yeah. Because swimming is the only thing that I can do. So you're swimming regularly, yeah? Every day. Perfect. And you're managing that? Your joints are coping this with This is the thing that is uh, happening now. It's a vicious now. circle, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'm getting pain here. Mm -hmm. In your foot. Tender? Yeah. Probably a little bit of wear and tear in there, I'm afraid. So, so maybe you're doing a little bit too much. Maybe the... I'm not jumping. Is it worth thinking about pulling back on the swimming a little to see if that helps with the ankle pain? It might be that it's sensible maybe to take a little bit more yeah. of the painkillers and reduce your exercise. 
I hardly ever say to reduce exercise. It's fabulous that yeah. you're, you're doing that much. And if necessary, take some more of the Codidromol. You're taking the Lixie Zenotide and the Saxagliptin. You're taking the Metformin twice a day? Yeah. And you're taking Glyclozide? Yes. OK. You're on the maximum of all of that. Yes, yeah? yes. The difficulty is what we would add next, yeah? And what we would add next would be insulin, and the trouble with insulin is it will put weight on you, yeah? OK. So I think the sensible thing to do at the moment would be to watch at this level because your sugar really isn't disastrous. Doctor, I have a very great worry that I don't want to go blind. No. Because I've seen my mum go blind. Mm -hmm. How can I help? Um, I've got a swollen right ear. OK. When did it come up? Bank holiday Monday. All right. Has it ever happened before? Yes, it has. It usually goes over my face. Any other symptoms with this? Uh, a bit tired. Any problems with your hearing? No. <laughs> no. I used to be partially deaf myself, but it's, okay. uh, it's come back. This is the good side. Have you got itching in that ear? On bank holiday, it yeah. felt like it was a, like a toothache. OK. Like a throbbing. Yeah. And I felt like chopping it off because uh, mm. it was really... Look at this one. So it's causing you pain? Not really. OK. Fine. So the, the canal is, is narrower than right. the uh, left side. OK. Um, do you use cotton buds at all? No, I don't. Okay. No. And have you been swimming or anything different recently? No. 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 OK. Um, fine. I mean, it does look that, like there's inflammation in the right ear. Mm -hmm. um, so you, we, we sometimes call this otitis right. externa. Right. Um, but equally, what's confusing is your history before, but yeah, whether that's... this is a, another version of that swelling you used to get. <laughs> um, oh, dear. But this morning, I felt like a, there was a lump hop coming here on my side of my face here. Right. And I thought to myself, oh, God, don't start, it's going to come over. Okay. Yeah. OK. I would still take your Right. But given that you feel this is different, I, I'll treat this as otitis externa, which would right. be giving you an antibiotic, if okay. that's all right. Yeah, yeah. I think flucloxacillin would be an easy, reasonable one to take. Right. Do you think it's food allergies then? Have you found any foods that trigger this? I, see, what it is, I had... I um, uh, went to the Chinese place and I had some prawns. Yeah. But I've had prawns before, but it's never acted. But because it's got um, soy sauce and other yeah. stuff... Yeah, obviously the, the clear-cut ones are the ones where people have nuts and yeah. things that you can be hard to avoid in foods. Yeah. But with some of the additives, it's... Difficult. Yeah. Well, with this, this came on spontaneously. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So that's the antibiotic, and that's right. your usual fexofendin. Okay. And I hope this subsides. And Obviously, both of them are tablets. Both of them are tablets. tablets if right. it, it spreads to involve the Your eye face. area, then then and you're worried, then do come back. Yeah. But I'm hoping that won't happen. I hope okay. So. We're in touch All right. with. Take care. <laughs> bye bye. Okay then. Thank you. quite careful with my diet because I've seen my mum going blind. OK. So I don't want that to happen to me. And I think you're doing everything to minimise the chances of that. OK. Yeah? Yeah. I couldn't ever say to you it won't happen, but from where your eyes are now, really, you know that you're a long way from anything like that. That's why but... I'm keeping to my exercises and everything. Diabetes can lead to blindness in a variety of ways. Diabetes affects the blood vessels on the back of the eye and this can cause bleeding into the eye and can also cause some swelling in the eye, all of which can contribute to a loss of vision. The most important things you can do are to control your blood sugar, to control blood pressure and to make sure your cholesterol is where it should be. Try not to worry. I know that's really easy to say and difficult to do. Because my main concern is, you know, I don't want to be a burden to anyone. Sure you're not. No? I'm not at present, but in future... You're being proactive. Yeah. Good. Right. So, keep that for your records. Yeah. And you'll come back for a blood test in three months' time for me? Yeah. Good. Thank you, Dr. Volger. No problem. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Bye -bye. 
Kenneth Wright. Hello. Morning. Come through. Have a seat. No. No? <laughs> Is that you? That's me. Oh, I thought it was the chap with the... Oh, he, he's on leave. Is so he? I'm sorry to disappoint. No, this is you, is it? This is me. Yeah? Yeah. You're yeah. registered with me. Yeah, I am, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm here too for the results of the blood tester. Yeah, OK. We were doing the... See how the B12 would settle and... Uh, well, you're no longer thyroid. anemic. Your haemoglobin level's OK. And your B12 levels, the range is from 180 to 700. Yeah. And yours is over 1,000 now. So you're well topped up, I think. So I don't think we need to give you any more B12. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> no. And the thyroid? Yeah, not so good. Can I just check you're not taking thyroxine? I'm not taking any tablets at all. But you were on thyroxine? Yes, yes. And why did you stop it, can I Because I didn't like them. They weren't doing okay. me any good. They were doing me more harm than good. You know, I don't like taking pills at all. I haven't taken any tablets at all this year. Can you I ask too? how you're feeling at the moment? Well, I've got this... Fatigue, tiredness fatigue. Yeah. And nothing is doing anything for that. I've lost my drive, you know. OK. So, and so how, long that, how long have you been feeling like that? Well, it must be uh, all this year, definitely, yeah. Right, so. OK. So do you think there might be a connection? No. It seems like you stopped the thyroxine and you started to feel a little bit more tired and a little bit not have the get up and go. So there may be a link. If we tried it again on a lower dose, it may make you feel better. Well, we'll go 25 then, yeah? OK. So we'll go 25 and then we'll do a blood test in two months and then I will personally look at the results and, and see where we're going. OK. Yeah? Yeah. It's nice to meet you and, and thanks for your time. And no problem at all. <laughs> and thank you very no much. No problem. Indeed. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Many people in the surgery. I can't keep up with it. Can't keep up. Uh, Elise, tell us, please. Elise. So, what's happening? Uh, pain in my chest. Mhm. Mm How long for? Uh, since mm, sort of yesterday, late evening. Yeah. Now I haven't slept very well because pain. I couldn't get comfortable with it. Yeah. If I take a deep breath. It hurts even more. Yeah. If I move this arm, this way it hurts. You can really feel it? Yeah. OK. Right there. And you can feel it when you do that? Yeah. So if I press on that... OK, that's really sore. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just have a quick listen to see. Deep breaths from this, good. Get in now. Good. Does it go through to the back at all? Yeah. Yeah. And every time you move this, then you can just feel yeah. it. Like a stabbing, yeah. sharp, really sore pain. What do you do for your job? Um, see a supervisor at a care home for the elderly. So it's quite manual work. Do you know what you need to do? You need to do more supervising. Yeah, rather than the <laughs> manual part. So you've got something called costochondritis. Have you ever heard of that before? No. <laughs> <laughs> sounds a lot worse. Well, it sounds a lot worse than it is. It's, mm. it's not dangerous, okay? okay? But it just feels as if somebody's crushing your chest yeah. at the moment, doesn't it? So where your so you've got a breastbone that goes down the middle. You've got ribs that come from the side, OK? And in between the ribs and the breastbone is cartilage, OK? And as it gets lower down, you've got more cartilage. So what you've got is an inflammation between the cartilage and the rib, no. OK? Often it is a viral type thing. It comes along and affects it. It doesn't have to be. Sometimes we have no idea what starts it off, mm -hmm. OK? But it's extraordinarily tender. You can press on it and you just double yeah. over in pain, take your deep breath. Of course, that increases, you know, so that starts to pull it apart, causes a lot of pain, move your shoulder. Yeah. Causes a lot of pain, all of those characteristics. It does go away by itself, okay, but it may take a bit of time. It may take a week or two, okay. Mm -hmm. So I need to give you something reasonably strong to help it. Okay. Yeah. Costochondritis. Yeah, it's a nice. great word. Yeah, there may not be an H there. I can never remember, but that's one of those things. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Okay. See you later. Bye bye. Bye. bye.
in there. Oh, how are you? <laughs> Went to the pharmacy to pick up the other prescription. That's right. That's right. And, yeah. Um, yeah. and he woke up. And when he woke up, it was just... Yes, I see. That's right, yeah. yeah. And the other eye seems to be pretty good. Yeah. Oh, no. How oh, are you? Well, I think it is worthwhile treating it because it is quite red and there's quite a lot of pus in it. Yeah. And my suspicion is that it's going to get uh, worse. We, we uh, don't treat these most of the time. They're viral. Yeah. Most of them, they clear up. But this looks to be something that's getting... Uh, has the potential to get a lot worse a lot quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So we give him something just topical in, into his eye. And uh, I would like you to use it for five to seven days, depending on how you get on. Okay. Uh, we're going to give him drops. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's highly contagious, so it's very important that you wash your hands yeah. after um, having administered the drops. Um, and then um, bathe his eye, just, just rub it around with a warm compress and clean out the green exudate. Yeah. Um, but uh, not allergic to any antibiotics, as far as you know? No. Mm -hmm. As soon as the pharmacist was trying to uh, describe it, I knew it's something I had to see. Because yeah. sometimes these can be fairly mild. Yeah. And sometimes they ha you can see in the speed it has developed. Yeah, yeah. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank yeah. you very much for your help. You're welcome. Nice to see you. Bye-bye, Sebastian. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for coming in. <laughs> Are you feeling better? Yes. <laughs> OK, so it's just the medication that causes trouble to you? Yes. OK. I'm fine now. You um, are very sensitive to any medication whatsoever, aren't you? Uh, that's what we've learned over the last few yeah. months. I've tried everything before. That's right. Everything affects me and I'm fine now. You know, as soon as I go on those, I go down. Mm. How much are you smoking now? Ten, which means 15, I suppose. Mm. Ten would mean times two, 20 for me, whenever patients tell they smoke ten. Five. Have you thought about quitting smoking any time? I do try. I've tried everything. Mm. Hypnosis, mm. you wouldn't believe it. Alan Carr, I've spent a fortune. Have you? Do you like smoking? Do you enjoy smoking? Uh, yes, I suppose I do, especially mm. after a meal. So you are aware that you are at risk of all these issues with the lung and the heart as well. I know. Mm. Okay. But I can't take the tablets. Mm. Yeah, let's uh, put to bed the smoking bit. Help is available when you are ready to quit. Uh, we've got smoking cessation clinic running on Saturday mornings. That's something you can think of. Let's have a quick look at your heart and see what's going on if you want to. Take off your cardigan. Just going to feel your pulse. Okay, I'm just going to listen to your heart. Is it good? Uh, I will uh, let you know in a moment. Grab a pew there. And I think you've come for a review about your back, is that right? Tell me what's been happening then. I do suffer with my back. Yeah? I've done it for a while, for yeah. a long time. Yes. I've got prolapse L4 and 5 disc. OK. Um, I was making my bed, my back popped. On Friday, I spoke to a GP. She gave me two milligram diazepam. Uh-huh. Just to try and relax it. But it just got worse. My whole back here. Uh -huh. This side is all locked. Uh-huh. OK, let's have a little look and see. Let me just pop you up onto the bed a wee minute and sort of see. This is the hardest bit. Uh-huh, just laying flat, yeah. All right, I'm just going to lift this leg up for a wee minute, OK? Uh, is, that, is that hurting you? Yeah. On whereabouts? On the head. On that bit, OK. Yeah. Can you grab that leg and hold it for me? Now, if you can, try and pull it up and at the same time push down. 
Can you feel that sort of? Yeah. Okay. Just relax. It's in your sacroiliac joint. It's not your discs that's causing the problem. Okay. And that's where your spine and your pelvis join. Right. We need to sort of loosen that up. And the yeah. way to loosen it up is to sort of gently manipulate it. Right. Now, you can do some of that yourself. So what I was getting you to do there is part of it. Okay. Also, if you're sort of pushing down gently, I know it's a wee bit sore, but that sort of starts to mobilize it. Yeah. The other thing you can do is if you bring the leg up, yeah. like so, and then you swing it over around that way hard. Now, it's still quite sore, but mm. if you did that, it'd be hard. I think you'd benefit from some anti-inflammatories around here to try and settle that down. I can't actually take anti-inflammatories. Are you worried about your problem with your stomach? Yeah, Yeah. because I've got a high exhale. Yeah. The best way would be to pay into an osteopath to, or a mm. chiropractor to loosen that up for you. Mm. Do you want a hand up or do you want me to let you get no, yourself I'm up? <laughs> I know how you feel, don't worry. It's, it's not pleasant, is it? Do you want me to give you a little bit more diazepam as well? Please, if that's OK. I've been quite lucky, actually. It hasn't played up for a long time. Uh -huh. I lost... I was quite bigger. I've lost 11 and uh -huh. a half stone. But, uh, brilliant. So. That, that <laughs> obviously helps. Yeah. <laughs> the heart is beating fast at the rate of about 110 beats per minute. And it's beating irregular. What should it be? Beating? It should be around 70 beats per minute. Uh -oh. so. so it's about 50% OT? So a normal heartbeat will be doing like this. Your beating is like this. Yeah. It's very irregular very fast. So the heart is not designed for beating faster and irregular. And at some point, it'll give way, causing heart failure issues. And the clot that forms inside that uh, small area called left atrium can, can get dislodged and cause stroke as well. What are your thoughts? I've got to do something. I, mean, I don't have a stroke or a heart attack. Yeah. Evans. Yeah. So you're smoking. Um, your current diet, which you think is not great? It's my diet. My diet is terrible. Terrible. OK. So if you're OK with it, I'm going to refer you to the um, specialist in um, at the hospital. Is that OK? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry I could not have much help, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye. I've yeah. come to mm. see you about the sen again, yeah? Yeah. All this pins and needle all the time. These three are OK. This one is some time. Yeah. And but this, this one. little mm. one, look at that, it's permanently stiff. Oh, right, I see. see. And uh, let's have a look at this one. Got no problem with this one. So just make a fist on this one and make a fist on this one. Yes, OK? And open them out. So does this feel different? Does it feel numb? Yeah, this one. This one feels slim, as numb, if I've yeah. got pins and needles. Yeah. So I just want to put a little um, page of paper between your fingers like this. I want you to hold on to it, and I'll try to pull it away. Between okay. this one, these two? Uh, no, these ones for the moment, yeah. Pull. Yes, good. And then I'm going to pull again. Good. And these two, uh, I'm going to pull again. Okay. So just take off your coat and your, your uh, jacket. What I'm worried about yeah. is what? having watched all these programs. Oh, yes, yes, think, yes. Uh, you know when they've got to amputate your foot and it gets oh, all do, black? Oh, oh diabetes, gangrene. Diabetes, mm, gangrene. Yeah. yeah, no, that's, this is not that. This is your ulnar nerve. Yeah. So you have uh, nerves that uh, roots come out of your neck. Yeah. They go under here. They then form a big uh, plexus. And then out those come the nerves. And one of the nerves supplies sensation to this finger and half of this finger. Ah. And it's called the ulnar nerve. Yes. Somewhere uh, between there and here, mm -hmm. your ulnar nerve is being interfered with. Stand up for me for a sec. Put your chin on your chest for me. Good. And now put your head right back up. But throw your head right back. OK, you're a bit stiff in the, your neck. And I think what's happening is the muscles uh, may be uh, trapping part of the ulnar nerve uh -huh. that's supplying this. And they may be causing it up here. It's happening between your spine here and your plexus under this muscle here. Mm -hmm. So 
take a seat. So it's not anything you okay. need to be worried about. That's fine. It may recover itself. Okay. The ulnar nerve does more than supply sensation to these. It also supplies power to the muscles in the small muscles of your hand. Now, the interesting thing about you is that when you look at your muscles in your hand, they're still just as powerful mm -hmm. as they would normally be. So I think this is going to be relatively short-lived okay. because whatever caused it up here, I don't think will uh, continue. But I think if you could do more neck exercises, like chin on chest, yeah. head right back, chin over your shoulder, chin over the shoulder, and do those movements maybe three or four times and do that four times a day, it will free itself. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Not at all. You're welcome. I just don't want you worrying about this. Anyway, nice to see you. Yeah, yeah. Thank nice you very much nice to see you, Ned. Yeah, bye yeah. Bye, then. All the best. You take care. Bye. 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 See you soon. Thank you. See you then. Bye bye. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you and you. Bye. Take care then. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. It's meant to be like really clear, isn't it? Not clear, it's meant to be a like, light yellow. This is that orange. Reese Smith. Oh, yeah. Hello, Kelly. Hello, oh, right, back with this one now. Hello, how are you? Sit there. Give that right. to the doctor. Oh, thank you very much. Look at all the nice presents. I know, we were sitting there wrong, didn't it? So, what have you had done? He's had some surgery, yeah? Yeah, he had a circumcision. He's had problems with his peen for, like, the last couple of years. And so they did a circumcision? Yeah. He took the foreskin off, hoping that that might help the pee flow, but it hasn't. OK, so the pee flow hasn't got worse since Yeah, it has. It has got worse. Is it hurting him to pee? Yeah. And before he had the circumcision, it was the same sort of thing, yeah. lots of trouble passing water. Yeah. And last night he was up and down and he's pushing and he's pushing and it's not coming out. Is he opening his bowels? Yeah. He's not constipated? No. Yes, if he's constipated, that can cause problems with emptying your bladder, no? No. You go every day, don't you, for number two? Yeah? yeah? OK, let's have a look at you then. Can you climb up onto the couch for me, sweetheart? He drinks a lot as well. Oh, wow. That's impressive. I don't think I could get all the way up there. Yeah. Hello. Thank you yeah. for waiting. Okay. Have a seat. And Doctor, we we've met on the phone, haven't we? We haven't actually met. Oh, yes, that's right, yes. yes. Hello, nice to, nice oh, nice Hello. to meet Hi. you. Hello, nice to I've been having trouble with my ear for the last um, seven weeks. I did see Dr Shah and she gave me some drops which, which actually made my ear worse. OK, so It's yeah, been yeah. bleeding. Right. It's been very itchy right. and very sore. Right. And the drops she gave you didn't help? No, they never do. When you say they never do, is this an ongoing problem? Oh, yes, I've been to... Um, the hospital and everything about my okay. ear, and it is an ongoing problem. And what, they, what do they say the problem is? Well, they said it was something to do with my jaw, but I don't agree with that. I OK. It's something to do with my ear. So how long has it been going on for, this trouble? Years? Oh, since I was a child. Oh, so, yeah, so, yeah. so just a couple of years then, not, not that long. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK. Let's look, let's look oh, at the, okay. the ear that's not trouble then, yeah? Is it going to hurt if I touch you? Does that hurt? No, no. Does that hurt? No. 
looks okay. Does I can't it? see any bleeding. I can't see any no, sore. It's... It looks a little bit sore compared to the other one. Yeah. It's not been pouring of blood or anything. Right. It's just been like bits of Do you blood clean your ears? Because um, they look really clean. Do you use cotton buds? Yeah, but I don't go all the way in. Yeah, you shouldn't go in at all. They're, no. they're too clean. Yeah. That's the problem. They might yeah. there to protect it. Yeah. And I would urge you to, to not put any cotton buds. The best you should do is get a flannel or a bit of tissue and just wipe yeah. your ear. What it is, it's because when they were itchy, oh, I put the cotton bud in. Yeah, and, and you scratch it. And it, it's an itch where you can't get out yeah, and it's really annoying. So what happens is you get the itch, you scratch it with a cotton bud, yeah. which damages the skin, which makes yeah. it more itchy, so you scratch it even more it and it makes it worse and it makes it more yeah. it's bleeding, yeah. You got any moisturising cream or something? No. There's just something to just put in it, to just dab it on there. Oh, OK. And it might just ooze the itch. But don't go sticking it down or anything. Because I thought the itch would be further down the ear. It's probably just at the ear. It's probably just, it's probably quite near the outside. Oh, OK. Yeah. And that will just, then the cream might soothe the itch without you putting anything in it, without you yeah. scratching it. OK, thank yes. you very You're much, You're very welcome. Doctor. Thanks for coming in. All right, nice to meet you. Bye-bye. Bye. Pull down for me, sweetheart. No, no, that looks OK, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Nice and tidy. Does that hurt, sweetie? No? A, bit. a little bit. What we were worried about was whether or not there was mm. urine stuck in his bladder there. There's no urine there. You can see how my fingers yeah. go right in. His tummy would be really hard and you would feel yeah. the bladder. But he, he goes up and down, up and down, and he's not sleeping. Absolutely. Come back so across, darling. He's I'm tired in the morning oh. when we have to go to school. He's shattered. And he's not sleeping until 12 o'clock. He goes to bed at, like, 9. And he's up and down, up and down. Right, so I don't think that there's any urine stuck in there that isn't coming out, but obviously it's not right. Yeah. Looks a Tiny bit red, but not obviously infected, but there's some white cells and some protein in his wee, so it may well be that there's an infection higher up and that's what's causing his problems. What we're going to do is send that off to the hospital. Yeah. And we're going to give him some antibiotics. Yeah, okay? that'd be lovely. Lots of fluids to keep drinking. Are you giving him some paracetamol for when it hurts? Yeah, cowpole. Perfect. OK. Is Reese allergic to anything? No. So I think he can't have. No. Now, if at the end of it he's not right, we want to see him again. Yeah. If the anti if the sample comes back showing he needs any different antibiotics, we'll be in touch. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And in the meantime, if it's, if you finish the antibiotics and it's still no better, we bring come. him back. Yeah. There you go, Reese. Do you want to take that off to the chemist? All right. Good boy. What do you say? Thank you. You take care. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Bye bye. <laughs> this way, chemist. This way. I believe that I'm going to running. As soon as I cut out the exercise, I've just gone. I need to get back into it Saturday morning. Why can't I enjoy it like that? What? Running. Oh, I run like, I run weird. You know, I like run. Phoebe, your friends. friends. Literally, watch. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria says Panska, please. Come in, take a seat. How can I help today? Yeah, yesterday she told me when she take her right hand up, yes. in breast side, she feels something hard and pain. Uh-huh. You can show, doctor? Come. Any lump or is it just painful? And I feel something hard. OK. Like something like, for example, like stone or something. OK, like all right. Can you show me what you feel? Is it painful? How did you notice it? Yesterday when she's sitting in the room, yeah. she just put like hand, sometimes she like put yeah. somewhere hand uh, yeah. evening and uh, she told me she feels something hard and uh -huh. uh, when she touched she feel pain. Okay. Anyone in the family with breast problems? My mother-in-law. Mother-in-law, so her yeah. grandmother, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what's the problem there? She got uh, mm -hmm. breast cancer. OK. Tell me about your knee and what's been happening with it. Well, it started off... Um, I had a car accident about 10 years ago. Yep. And when the, um, the vehicle turned on its side mm -hmm. and my, my leg was sort of to call the brunt of everything, mm -hmm. I got a little bit of swelling. Yep. And, but then it always went down. Yep. Uh, never had a lot of pain. Okay. Anyway, um, 
I was playing football, yep. uh, twisting it. Yep. And then, I don't know if I was, because it was twisted, I was putting a lot, lot yep. more pressure on this. But then it came up, but as it did before, it mm. didn't go down this time. It's, okay. And then so I it stayed getting, up. You know, I've, and I have keep getting quite a bit of pain in it. Does it ever lock on you to the point where it sticks and you can't move it? No. Does it click or clunk? Yes. Yep, OK. Do you ever try and take anything for it to help it? It's the usual stuff, like the uh, ivory pure yep. and... OK. Pop your shoes off, pop your socks off. Come and have a lie there. OK. Uh, head back, nice and relaxed. Don't go to sleep. <laughs> OK, so this is the good one. So there is a difference in size. There is, isn't there? You know, doesn't feel any difference in warmth. Yeah, you've got a fair bit of fluid in there. <laughs> it's a big difference between the two. OK, let's bend that in. Bend it out. Bend it back in again. No, just a bit of clicking. It's clunking and it's clicking and all sorts of things there, isn't it? The fluid does come into this. is called your super patella pouch. When you get fluid within the joint, it sort of goes into there as well. So you can feel pain across the front here as well, but also down on that. The last one I'm going to do, I'm going to press down on that kneecap. I want you to squeeze these muscles really tightly and try and pull the kneecap upwards. So nice and relaxed. Off you go. What's that like? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's quite painful. And again, is that the pain you get? Yeah. Right, OK, hop up. Can I even get a sweep? Sorry? Can I even get a sweep? No. <laughs> a couple of things. You've got something going on in the joint. You've had an X-ray, but years ago, haven't you? Yes. Um, I think we need to do another one. OK. Even then, you had sort of mild arthritic changes, OK? Including a change behind that kneecap. Now, that kneecap's really irritable at the moment, OK? Remember when I pushed down on it and it pulled up? You know, that's scraping the bottom side of that. So I think you've got a fair bit of inflammation going on behind there. And undoubtedly, I think, within the knee, because you've got plenty of fluid in the knee too, OK? So I'm going to send off a, a referral form for a, a knee x-ray, OK? It'll take a week to get the result. Thank you very much. OK, mate. Happy days. Good to see you. Likewise, my man. Take care. And let's avoid the vet. <laughs> hey. <laughs> see you again. See you later, buddy. Bye-bye. Right. That isn't it. Yeah. It's very hard, isn't it? Okay, good girl. Now put your arms all the way up. Good girl. All right. So what we'll do is um, refer to the breast clinic. Mm -hmm. and they can check that out for her. It's okay. quite firm. It might be part of the rib bone, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you get cysts and things, but they'll. Mm -hmm. they're, I don't think there's anything worrying. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's okay. only nine years old, but yeah. um, we'll just get it checked out. It's okay, fine. Is that OK? So yeah. you should hear from the clinic. It usually takes a couple of weeks. They're usually quite yes, fast. Yes, no yeah. problem, no problem. We'll just get it checked. Mm -hmm. OK? OK. Lovely. So Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye now. <laughs> Back hurts, Gurgun. You know what I've done? I've made a mistake. Gurgun made a mistake? Yeah. <gasps> no! I better write that on the calendar. I know. Gurgun made a mistake. I made a mistake. Mm, no, girl. My back's killing me. Oh. Hiya. Hello. Thanks for waiting. I'm Dr. Tawana. I think you've just recently registered with the practice, is yes. that right? Welcome. How can I help? Uh, two things. First, my feet, uh, ingrown toenails on both big toes. Sure, sure. Do you mind if we take a look? Sure. How long have they been troubling you for? Um, they've been steadily getting worse, so it's hard to say... Oh, wow, yeah. ..when they got as bad as they are. Goodness. On the order of a year, certainly. It looks quite red and sore at the moment. Yeah. I just wonder, has there been kind of pus at any time as well? Definitely this time last year there was. Now it's more like some sort of thick, smelly pus blood mm. mixture. And is it the same kind of picture on the other side yeah. as well? On average, this one has been worse yeah. uh, in the last couple of months. 
short term. What I think it requires is a course of antibiotics, OK, because okay, of that, yeah. that kind of bad smelling uh, discharge that you're describing. Yeah. Moving forward, I think it needs a referral to have some minor surgery done. Are you allergic to any antibiotics? Not that I know about. OK. Given that this has probably been rumbling for quite some time, I think it may benefit from uh, an extended course of antibiotics. So we'll, yeah. we'll give you two weeks' worth. Let's do that referral to the minor surgery GP here. You mentioned something else as well. Yes. Uh, the other thing is I've been recommended by my firm's occupational health to start seeking, um, well, diagnosis first, then treatment, uh, regarding stress, depression and or anxiety. Physical problems can certainly exacerbate mental health conditions and there is lots and lots of evidence available to suggest uh, quite strong links between, for example, patients who suffer with chronic pain and who are also suffering from depression and vice versa. What made them consider that that might be what's going on? Uh, well, what made them notice was persistent lateness. OK. Um, OK. What are your thoughts? I would be inclined to agree, not because of the lateness, but... Um, is I've, I've been finding it really difficult to do anything. Mm. I mean, obviously, leaving for work is one of those things, mm. hence. Mm. Um, but even things that I'm theoretically going to enjoy yeah. is... It's like there's a huge energy hump yeah. before I can get going. Get going. How long have you been feeling that way for? Uh, I'm not actually sure. OK. How can I help you today? Ever since I was about 14, I've been suffering with migraines okay. uh, on and off. Um, I mainly put it down to puberty. I thought, like, my dad suffered at the same sort of, t same sort of age. Then they sort of seemed to clear up late teens. But I've just got back from holiday a week and a half ago, mm. and I've had four in the last two weeks. Oh, right. And that's never, ever, that sort of frequency has never been a case mm. before, so... Can really... you describe the headache for me? It always starts off with a flicker in, in my vision. Yeah. And that gradually expands into quite a large blind spot. I lose sensation in my fingers. OK. Um, could, I think it's dependent on which side the headache's on as to which hand and sometimes right. my lips as well. OK. Um, that never used to happen when I was younger. So what you're describing does sound like migraines, but it's become more severe. And yep. I just need to get you to do a few different movements with your eyes to start with. So can you follow my finger with your eyes but keep your head still and tell me if you get any blurred or double vision? Follow it up. And then all the way down. Any trouble? No? Can you feel me touching you? Is it about the same on both sides? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear this rustling noise? Yeah. Down on that side? Yeah. yeah. Can, you, can you stick your tongue out? Yeah, that's fine. And can you screw up your eyes and stop me from opening them? That's fine. OK. I just want to have a look at your eyes as well. Would you mind turning the light off for me? So I'm just going to walk quite close towards you with this light. Mm -hmm. Try not to look directly at the light. OK, that's fine. I think it would be worth getting an eye test if you've not had one in a couple yeah. of years, just to make sure. I suspect that these symptoms are related to the migraine, though, that you've described. Yeah. I think, at the moment, it would be worth giving you the preventative one. Do you mind just popping the light back on for me? Yeah, Thank you. I thought it was a bit dingy. <laughs> OK. Thank you very much. Take Cheers. care, then. Have a good day. Bye-bye, you, you too. Bye. How are things like sleep, appetite? Uh, sleep is less than eight hours a day, mm. probably six on average, mm. and I am way overeating. I'm always hungry. Yeah. And then stress? Honestly, I don't know how I would tell. Okay. How much frustration and anger is a reasonable response to mm. life? Mm. Those are the two emotions I'm really capable of feeling yeah. all the time. Yeah. Any reasons why you're feeling that way? Things not quite right at home or at work? Things tending not to go to plan at work, that sort of thing. OK. From the symptoms, I think, Graham, um, there certainly is that suggestion where perhaps you're, you're kind of not getting enough sleep, you're perhaps not waking up refreshed. Mm. It takes you a while to get that, that oomph and that get up and go. 
and then having that kind of perhaps that frustration and anger that you've mentioned, they, they point towards a diagnosis of depression. Mm -hmm. But what about other things that give you kind of enjoyment? Uh, I'm a tabletop wargamer, a Warhammer player. Uh -huh. um, and when I can get over myself and get in to go and play, it's fun while it lasts, if you see what I mean, but yeah. the minute I'm gone, I've forgotten about it. It's like right. returning to work after a holiday. It can be really important to encourage patients to focus on the positive aspects of their life um, and encourage them also to do exercise, enjoyable activities, because it's been shown that this produces serotonin, which is our body's happy chemical. We fit into the equation here by saying to patients, look, there is the option of an antidepressant medication. And the final option would be talking to someone about your emotions. And so talking to someone who's trained uh, and would, would sit down with you and go through how things are feeling and try to work out where perhaps this has all come from. And that's Talking Therapies. It's a free service on the NHS. What do you think about that? Um, obviously, I'd want to start at the less drastic end and move upwards, so we sure. reserve medication for option three. Yes. That would suggest to me that uh, perhaps talking therapies could be a really sensible approach for you. Um, I'm going to provide you with contact details for the talking therapy service, and we always say to patients, look, it's over to you to contact them. Yeah. We will be arranging a follow-up appointment for you All right. after today, just to see, well, What's How, changed? Yeah, where are we? What's changed? What's different? Uh, I'll ask my admin team to arrange that appointment for you. There we go, Graham. Um, A few ways in which you can contact them and the kind of things they offer there. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. All right, we'll see you in about two, three weeks' time. Thank you very Take much. Take care. Where's that? Is that my hair? In the back of your chair? That is disgusting. Is that my hair? Can you see it? Blonde. I think it's mine. God, I'm molting. <laughs> <laughs> my, my hair's falling out. Oh, God. I'm gonna be bald. Hello, come and see you. How are you today? Tell me, how can I help you? Hello. Yeah, come yeah you're coming. Come yeah. Mums are allowed, yeah, if they're OK with it. OK. Tell me, how can I help you? I've been told to come to see you because um, when I had my 24-hour ECG, they found some okay. problems in my heart. Let's have a look. OK, so you had an EEG, which was abnormal. Yeah. Confirming the diagnosis of epilepsy. You were put on levetiracetam. Yeah. Kepra, yeah? Is that helping you? No more seizures? Uh, so far. So this is basically a first-degree heart block, which we tend to see uh, in some patients. I'm just going to check your pulse, if that's OK with you. Thank you. I have noticed that the more she is tense, the more... The seizures? Seizures. Do you think it's right? Yeah. Mm. What are the triggers you feel that you... I don't know, like one minute I'll be fine, the next minute I'll just be laying on the floor and then I'll lose consciousness as well, and then I'll come back around. Is that what's causing you the increased anxiety or panic, or is there any I'm underlying...? Really sure. Yeah. I think it's not... Yeah, Are you socially very anxious? Sometimes, yeah. Being at work yeah. and things like that, yeah. Let's have a look. So I was put on quite a pen, propanolol and... Yeah. She, she put too. quite a lot of it. Yeah, I can see that. Gabrielle stopped her antidepressants, thinking that they were the cause for her seizures. But later, it was confirmed that she had uh, epilepsy and was started on anti-epileptic medications. Now that we know that these medications are not the ones that are responsible for your seizure, we can restart one of them, called citalopram, okay. at a very small doses of 10 milligrams. That is used for anxiety as well as depression. You could see how it goes with that. Okay. Prescribing in multiple medical condition can be a tricky issue. It's not an exact science. Um, it is based on um, what's out there in terms of the research evidence and the patient experience. 
And our own experience of having prescribed in the past, it's a triangulation of all these three that would help us issue the right medication to patients. There is another medication called venlafaxine. The mention here is use venlafaxine with caution in the history of epilepsy. So most of the antidepressants or perhaps all of them will have that kind of effect. But you haven't tried that. Yeah. That's something that I'm happy to issue that for you and see how it goes it's once daily. Okay. And you can see whether that will help you. Yeah? Okay. Thank you very much. All the best. All right? Thank you. Take care. No one speaks Polish, Oh, I got told that I look Polish, but I don't speak it. Very helpful. Oh, just letting you know. <laughs> <laughs> John Condomiti, please. Hi. Hello, come through. Have a seat. Hi. Hi, how can I help? My problem at the moment is for the past few days, it felt like I had trapped wind right up in quite a large area. But now, even though it's not as great, I still can't reach the top end of my, of my breath. It's hurting all on the right. OK. And what do you do for a living? Construction. Right. Mm. I was looking at your T-shirt thinking... So, is no, it, I'm qualified as one. Right, OK. Going to put this on your finger to start with. Have you had a cough or cold in the re in sort of recent few weeks? No, you've otherwise been quite well. Health-wise, I'm pretty good. So listen to your chest now. Point to me where it was hurting you when you were when you took a deep breath in. In fact, can I lift this up when you do that? Yeah. So it gives me an idea. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh. So take a deep breath in and out. Whereabouts? In yeah. there. Okay. You can relax now. Right, I'm just going to tap on your chest now. Listen to your back. Do the back now. That's great. OK. So, is it tender when I push on the chest wall here? No. I'm thinking that it might have been a rib. When I push on those ribs there, yeah. is uh -huh. it causing you any pain? So the pain is when you take a deep breath in, it seems to be catching, is that right? Yeah. So do that one more time. OK. It almost sounds like what you have is something called pleuritis, where something is rubbing between the membranes that cover the lung. Now, why this has come on now is very difficult to pinpoint. I mean, I did do a check and your lungs sounded clear. Your oxygen levels are really high, so 99%, which is good. So, you know, one of the other reasons we look, try to exclude is uh, something like a blood clot, but that does not seem to fit with you. Obviously, if you suddenly find you're really, really out of breath and, and it's severe pain that is, that's different to what you have now, then you do need to seek medical attention. For the time being, just take it a bit more easy yeah, this week. Obviously, yeah. you need that rest, so kind of. I can give you uh, an anti-inflammatory that's stronger than ibuprofen, yeah. or you could stick to what you're taking. What would you rather? I'd rather take get something stronger. Stronger, OK. Right, thank take you very care. much. All right, nice to see you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Over an hour and two buses to get here. Well, I'm not bloody like coming back again. That's not it. It's going to take me two buses now to get. You know, it's hideous. Once upon a time, I'd forget the bus outside my door and bring me right round here. I tell you, they want us all to die, don't they? I've lived too long. That's the problem. Well, you're looking good then. Well, as I say, while I've got clothes on. <laughs> start coming off. You see the years, I get worse and worse and worse, I can assure you. Safi, she's been quite poorly, yes. really bad sore throat. Yes. Uh, her runny nose just started today, um, temperature. Yes. Just coming down with paracetamol, but I just wanted to get her checked out. She's coughing constantly. Of She's course. kind of... No I don't know if it's tonsillitis or what. I'm a little bit worried. No trouble. We'll get it all checked out. I'm just going to jot some of these things down. I have to ask. Mum? Yes. Have you come this way for me? That's fine. Pop your finger in there for me. Finger in there. Lovely. Let's pop that into your ear. Have you had this done before? Yeah. Lots and lots and lots. All right. Any earache? Yeah. Okay. 
Open your mouth as wide as you can. Very good, okay. Stay there for a minute, press here. I want you to know if there's any soreness here. Is that painful? Yeah. But very sore. Do you suffer with tonsillitis? I have before. Okay. Stand up for me. <clears throat> and just pop your jacket off for me. And if you turn around to your mum, nice big breaths in and out, and out, and again. Now you grab a seat for me. Okay. Good things, guys, good things. So, your temperature's perfect. Okay. Your heart rate is perfect. Okay. Your oxygen level is perfect, so all those okay. are good things. Okay, your chest is clear. You've good air entry on both sides. There's no crackles on your chest, which is okay. good. The throat is red, but there's no pus at the back of the throat, which is important. Your glands are up, so I can feel that's what's sore. Yeah, she did say. The likelihood by far is this is a viral infection. Antibiotics okay. won't work, unfortunately. There's no magic cure. Okay. Um, seven to ten days. Important things when you get a temperature, paracetamol, bring your temperature down, plenty of fluids and time. Does that all make sense? Yeah, it does. OK, that's good. i probably have the rest of the day off today then. Thank you very much. No Thanks. trouble, no Thanks. worries. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. I'm telling you now, girls, and I'm telling you, I would not... I would not order yeah. myself a triple vodka. So you them, Pam. She's naughty. She can drink that much. I can't. Well, I don't know. She gets pretty drunk herself. Yeah, but she came in on Friday and she said that she was rough. Mate, she had a hair done, makeup, everything. I came in, right? Hair was like this. I had Thursday night's makeup on. Still, I was rough. Come in, come and take a seat. Oh, it's a big room. Yes, come in. How can I help you, Miss Embry? How can I help? It's my legs. OK, what's wrong? It's pain, really painful. OK, which part is painful? It's um, round here. On the skin? Yeah. Describe the pain. Is it a burning pain? Is it a dull pain? Really sharp pain. I was in agony last night. Looking on the system, it looks like you've got arthritis of the knees, haven't you? Yeah. I've got these painkillers. Yeah, let's have a look. I've got them. Oh, lovely. Yeah, so that's your normal medications. I've got them. That's for pain, yes. How many of these do you take a day? They told me last night to take three of them instead of two, but I was in such agony last night. I've got the documents here. I think one of the doctors said the neighbours saw you coming off the bus and you were crying as you entered the house mm. and, and you were complaining of pains in the legs, so they called 111 for you. And I said to the doctors, I said, I feel like having them chopped off. Oh, no. No, no. don't say that, Gloria. such pain. How long has this problem been going on for? For years. Let's put some gloves on and check your legs. Do you put any cream on your legs? No. Because they're very dry. Because yeah. if the skin becomes quite tight, that can also cause pain. Can you feel me touching you here? And it hurts. That's it. That's right. where it hurts. Here? Yeah. On the front? Okay. And around the back as well. Okay. Is this the normal size of them? Are they a bit more swollen than normal? Yeah. They are? Pop those back on. I've got some cream. Yeah, so I might have to give you a stronger cream. And I think the doctors are right that saw you yesterday. You need to take three of those tablets instead of one. Yeah. Have you ever had a water tablet before? Don't think so. OK, let's have a look. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you one more tablet today. It will help shift some of the water off the legs. OK? I'm only going to give it to you for a week and then I'll get the nurses to come out and do a blood test. How does that sound? Yeah, fine. OK, so let's do that as well. And I'll give you a special ointment for your legs. OK? Mm -hmm. Apply the cream once or twice a day. So the water tablet is one a day in the mornings, OK? And I'll right. get the nurse to come out and make sure things are OK as well. All right, take care. Okay. Oh. Let me help you. 
The lift is just next door. <laughs> Take it. Take it, Gloria. Take it. Bye. Oh, my gosh. Was you in the other day when her son came in? And she went to him, oh, give us a kiss then, goodbye. So he went and gave her a kiss. I went, oh, give me one too. I didn't expect him to come in. And he went. One. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> How old is he? 17. Of course he went in for one. <laughs> Oh, I need candle. Hello. Come through. Have a seat. Thank you. Mister has a very bad cough and a very bad sore throat. It seems. Okay. Tell me, when did it start? Oh, oh, I've had it on and off for a week now. Okay. We're struggling to feed him basically. Okay. And how's the breathing? He's got floppy wind pipes, so his breathing's going to be erratic, and he's had a viral ever since he's been six weeks. So there's been no change in his No breathing. change at all. OK. And how long has he been feeding the way he's been feeding? It's been about a week. Any temperatures at all? No. I don't think you've done the smelly. I can smell it. Thank you, son. Is he, is he having wet nappies? Yes. OK. All right, let's check him over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fine. We'll start with his chest, and then we'll do his um, temperature and... Yeah, yeah, that's fine. ...his ears and throat and things. Yeah, no, that's fine. This little man has everything. He's got that. <laughs> okay, do you want to bring him over here? Sure. Just leave him the way that he is for the moment yeah. and we can check him over. <laughs> okay, so just one hand up his foot here and one hand on his forehead here. That's great, perfect. So if you sit him, um, sit him up, yeah. it might be easy if you put one hand across here and one hand on his forehead. That's perfect. Oh, little man. Oh. OK. Does he bring up a lot of his feed? Yeah. Because he's on Gaviscon. So I think what he's got is something called bronchiolitis. It's, it's a viral infection, combined with the fact that he's not feeding as he should be. Yeah. And the fact that he's so young, I would like the paediatricians to review him. Hospital? Yes. Hey, what are you looking at? Hi there, my name's Dr Dury. I'm a GP from Farnham Road Surgery. I've got a 15-week old boy I'd like you to review for me, please. Sounds like he's got bronchiolitis. My main concern is Mum says he's not been feeding. On examination, he's afebrile, respiratory rate of 48, heart rate's normal. Thank you so much. Bye. Right, there you go, Mum. Thank All you. the best. Take yeah, care, right? Like I said, it's just to, to be cautious yeah, and for so monitoring. Um, yeah, let's no see problem. how she gets on. All right. Come and tell. I tell you what I did like, and it was a vegetarian dish. It was halloumi, the halloumi in the wrap. That was quite nice. I ate in there once. Halloumi from Nando's. Yeah. They're famous for chicken, and you go and have vegetarian. Yeah, I'm not a big meat eater. Oh, I am. I'm so greedy for meat. And they don't do fish. So butterfly chicken, sweet sweet potato. <laughs> Come in. Take a seat. Is it Brougham, Brougham? Brougham. Brougham. Yes, as in Rome, but Brougham. That's interesting. Where's that from? Which part Lake, of the country Lake is that? Lake District. Lake District. Which yeah. part of Lake District? Oh, there's a village and an abbey. Um, is it an actual village yeah. called Brougham? There was, yes. There was. I think it's mostly disappeared now. Where is it in relation to Keswick and Windermere? Yeah, and... in the Kendall area. How can I help you? Well, I had an x-ray taken on my wrist. Yes. Damaged it. Two, three weeks ago now. Did you fall or something? Yes. Mm -hmm. I fell on, on that arm and it's still swollen up. I've had it x-rayed and the result was supposed to be in today. That's why I've come. It's still um, very sore. I can't put weight on it. No it's... acute bone injury demonstrated. Yeah, that's right. No fracture, she said. There is significant degenerative change, which basically means arthritis. arthritis. Yeah. OK. All over. It's still very painful. Um, I can hold an empty glass, but uh, a full one, no. Just relax. Because the arthritis doesn't help. 
Yeah. When we pass 21, yeah. <laughs> things start to Go heal a bit, a bit yeah. slower. Yeah, and, I know. And um, my hunch is, is that did you fall... Yeah. Yeah. And I felt like that you've it, you've yeah. I mean I suspect it's a lot of soft tissue injury. It's not bone. Not bone. And it's actually just a nasty sprain. I tell you what, I I'm going to give you some naproxen for a couple of weeks, which I want you to take with food. Yeah. A small dose, because you are 88. Probably time I departed this mobile mortal. Oh well, I, I don't think that's true. For what? For one thing, you're um, you're still compus mentis, you know. Aging is not easy. No, no. Tell me about it. <laughs> uh, because we've got healthier. The course of your life, life expectancy has done this. Yeah. I mean, when you were born, you know, oh. I mean, you're, you're you're a year younger than my grandmother. Oh really? My grandmother lived to be ninety. Yes. Um, yeah, and my grandfather was a. About 85. Were they all Cumbrian? No, they were from Liverpool. Oh, OK. Ah. Right. So I'll... Uh, take I'll this. Take that. Morning and evening with food, just for two weeks. Yeah, OK. And then see how you go. Come again if you're, if you're worried if it, about it. If it's no OK. Problem. Yeah, OK. Thank you. Show you to the door. <laughs> it's easy, you know. Take it easy. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye-bye. And we can catch up in two weeks' time, see how things are. Take care, good luck with everything. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Perfect. OK? You. you take care. Bye bye. She wants to go home. Yeah. Yeah. Thank bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye.